here we go. Let's do this. We've got one life, one shot. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? Addicted to Betterment, a podcast to inspire us to keep going, to try something new, to dream, to think big, bigger, to overcome. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, friends. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Addicted to Betterment. This one. This one is going to be unlike any episode that we have produced so far. So welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Today, we are going solo. We are going without my best friend, my favorite human and favorite podcast host, uh, my wife, Nikki Llewellyn Gregory. Uh, so today, we're just hoping to get this ball across the finish line without fumbling it. So here's how I'm feeling today. If you've ever parachuted out of an airplane, which I have done, I did it one time. I loved it. I probably will never do it again, even though I loved it. So I did it, check the box. But the thing about jumping out of an airplane that just keeps you from losing your mind is when you jump tandem, you know that the guy who is tied up on your back and you know that he's going to make sure it's pulled at the right time, that you're going to be able to land without breaking every bone in your body. And so, man, that gave me comfort when I jumped. I knew that this dude... He doesn't want to die either, and he's going to make sure we land okay. Well, I, I kind of count on Nikki for the same thing in our podcast. I know she's going to keep the ship in the water, and she's not going to let us break every leg. So today, we're just hoping to land, land without breaking any legs. So thank you for joining us on this journey. We get asked the question all the time, what is addicted to betterment? What is it? Uh, usually if you ask me that question, that can uh, open a can of worms. I get pretty fired up, but we thought we would take one episode and just dive into the core principles, the core principles that is addicted to betterment. And my hope is, is those resonate with you and make you want to join us on this journey even more with all the events and things we have going. By the way, keep your eyes peeled, keep your ears to the ground. We will have some really cool things coming up with the podcast. We're just really looking at all the aspects and looking to take how we help you on this journey with us, find new tools, new hacks, just equip all of us better on this journey of addicted to betterment. And we're finding partners to help us do that. And man, this is going to be exciting, bringing on some guests, bringing on people who have tools to help us stay addicted to betterment and continue to improve every single day. I know you want to be a part of that with us, so stay tuned. So what is addicted to betterment? The core principles that make up addicted to betterment. There's a lot of them, but we've somehow narrowed them down to six core principles, and I'm excited to share those with you today and hopefully they resonate. So let's dive right in. The very first thing the very first principle that is a core one in the addicted to betterment community is this, that in every facet of life, we can achieve unprecedented levels of excellence. What the hell does that mean? Okay, well, thank you for asking. Basically, we don't have to just get better in one area, or we don't have to have an area in our life that it just, oh man, I, I suck in this area. This, this area is my Achilles heel. The fact that in every facet of life, we can achieve unprecedented levels of excellence. Here's what that means. It means that we don't have to settle for mediocrity in any level, in, in any area of our life, in any of the, of the segments of the life wheel, which if you've been around addicted betterment all, at all, we are always talking about the life wheel. It's the core of everything that we do, but we don't have to settle for mediocrity in any area. And it's easy, you know, for the area that seems to be thriving to just focus on that one and the areas that <laughs> seem a little bit of a struggle to kind of let those go and just to ignore the hard work that it's going to take to, to get that area of life up to a level of excellence. So let me give an example. Things at work are thriving. Business is thriving. Man, things with the kids are great. My fitness is just, it's, it's at a really good level. I'm committed to daily activity in the gym or, or some sort of exercise. And I'm feeling good about my trajectory and my fitness, but my relationship is really in the, it's really in the tank right now. And so it's easier 
in, in that situation, it's easier to just ignore the work that it's going to take to fix the relationship and just focus on working more because work's thriving, going to the gym more because that's, that's fun right now. And doing the things that is thriving right now and ignoring the areas that just don't seem to be very fulfilling. That's the easy way. And we've all, we have all done it. I'm guilty and I know you are too. And the fact is that when you do the work, be honest with yourself, where are you at? By doing these principles, you can achieve an unprecedented level of excellence. You can achieve a more fulfilling life in that bucket than you've ever had. That's a core principle of addicted to betterment. And we believe that we believe that you don't have to settle for mediocrity in any area of life that you can actually achieve an awesome life in every area. So if we didn't believe that there would be no addicted to betterment, that's principle number one principle number two, and I can connect with this one at a level that's hard to even articulate. We can convert failures and challenges into powerful catalysts for growth. You don't have to be defined by your failure. (laughs) People can define you. People often want to talk about your misses, talk about your failures. You know, when I think of some of the greatest athletes in sport, I'll use baseball for an example. (laughs) Baseball, which let's be honest, pretty boring sport to watch, but the best hitters that have ever lived in baseball failed around 70% of the time. That statistic is staggering. When you think of the greatest baseball players to ever live, and in my mind, I'm a a diehard Yankees fan, and there's a long list of great ones, but I think of, of my favorite Yankee, Derek Jeter. Man, I mean, just Captain Clutch. The dude was clutch. He, he always came through when it mattered. Just an incredible athlete. And yet he failed. He got out 70% of the time. Wrap your head around that. Wow. Imagine if he got down in the dumps every time he failed. Well, he would be miserable. Uh, I think of, of Michael Jordan, who his famous quote, I have it hanging in, uh, in my house that I have failed over and over. And that is why I succeed. And he says something to the effect of, I have missed more than so many thousand shots in my career, 32 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed (laughs) over and over and over. I have failed. And that is why I succeed. Failure is a critical ingredient for success. And it's how we handle our failures. It's how we handle the challenges, the obstacles that really dictate how successful we are. I mean, Mike Tyson says every fighter has a plan until they get hit in the face. And then what? And that's, that's life, isn't it? (laughs) Isn't that life? We have a plan. We're cruising along and bam, a right hook hits us good. And what do we do? What do we do in that moment? How do we move forward from failure because here's the thing if you're human and if you if you're actually going after life you're going to fail i don't care if it's business i don't care if you're in the best relationship ever you're going to have days where you just get it wrong uh parenting god knows <laughs> you're going to fail it, it's in today's world of parenting it, it's it's going to happen how are you going to handle it how are you going to handle when you fail in your finances your finances uh, aren't what you hope they would be. And next thing you know, you find yourself in a challenging situation. How are you, how are you going to handle that? We believe that addicted to betterment, a core principle of who we are is that we can convert failures and challenges into our most powerful catalyst for growth. We are not meant to just survive. We're meant to thrive even in failures and challenges because they're going to happen. So we're not just meant to survive just to get by. We are meant to thrive, to turn those challenges, the the biggest obstacles, the things that we face, we grow through what we go through. And that is a core principle of addicted to betterment. We can turn those into powerful catalysts for growth. The third principle that I'll share with you, every facet of the life wheel has profound influence on all the others. Dang. (laughs) This is an undeniable truth, and I hope you can relate to this. Uh, I used the um, analogy just a minute ago where 
talked about when all these areas are thriving and then this one area is not, I'm, I'm going to speak for myself here, man. I know that when my relationship with Nikki is just thriving, her and I are in this good place. We're just clicking. Isn't it fun when things are just clicking? You're finishing each other's sentence. You're both on the same path. You're at going at the same pace and it's just clicking right along. It's really fun. But you know, we're clicking things with my boys are just solid. And I'm feeling like we're really in a good place. My fitness, man, I'm getting to the gym regularly with my community and my people. And I, I can see my fitness uh, in a really great trajectory, but dang business and work is stressful. <laughs> it's like every time I think I'm winning, next thing you know, I get that right hook that Mike Tyson talks about. And I find myself looking at the biggest challenges and I'm like, what the heck? So even when these other areas are thriving, next thing you know, my business or my, my professional career is really challenging and dang, that just sucks the life out of everything else. It's hard to show up as a great husband. It's hard to be present when you're sitting there in important conversations because you have all this stress, all this stuff in the back of your mind with this other area that applies to every area. If things with my boys are challenging, it just, it, it takes up all this headspace. It's hard to be great in the other areas. It's, it's hard to show up the way you want to show up when one area is really out of whack. You know, when I think of a wheel, I think of a wheel that's on, on my bike. So I have a bike that I love to ride. It's, I, it's one of my most treasured possessions. I used to say, if the, if the house catches on fire, the one thing I'm going to make sure I get is my bike. But you think of a bike and, and as it's going down the path. So Nikki and I love to ride on this path here in Indianapolis called the Monon. And man, when, when I'm riding my bike and I think the wheels are in good shape, that thing is smooth as silk, just rolling along. But last year I got a bubble. I got a little bubble on a tire and the way that thing rode, it, it sucked. <laughs> it's just the best way to put it. You know, it bumpy and it, it, it didn't ride very smooth. And then it started rubbing and now it's really causing a, a lot of an annoyance, even though the whole rest of the wheel is great. This one little area just threw everything out of whack. And that's the way life is. When you have this one area that is just out of whack, it's hard for the wheel to, to roll smoothly. So that is a core principle of addicted to betterment. Every facet of the life wheel has a profound influence on all the others. The fourth principle that I'll share engaging in the resistance against a mediocrity. It's a way of being, man, that's a tough one. Let's just be real. Being average is easy. Trying to be outstanding, trying to achieve something that is much better than, than average. Some, when you try to be outstanding, you try to be exceptional. You're going to rub people the wrong way. That's first of all, just, just accept it. Uh, if you try to be exceptional, you're going to make waves. You are going to make waves. You're, you're going to get resistance. If you try to have a great relationship and you, you want to do the things that to have a great relationship, guess what? That takes some hard work. It's hard to lose the ego when you need to check the ego at the door. It's hard to be humble and take care of their needs before your own. It's hard to, you know, to do the work because it actually takes work. It takes intentionality. It takes effort. It's way easier to dive out and just be like, ah, I'm not going to mess with it. Same with, with health and fitness. Listen, there's nobody that loves pop tarts more than me. I mean, a brown sugar and cinnamon pop tart is like God's gift to mankind. I know you all agree with me and man, you know, when I'm trying to eat healthy and I'm trying to watch my nutrition and work out regularly, those pop tarts seem like they scream my name more than any, any other time. And it's easy to, uh, you know what? I'll go to the gym tomorrow. It's I'm too busy today. I'll just go tomorrow. I don't have time. You know, it's, it's hard to try to resist mediocrity. Average is easy, exceptional, and trying to be great at anything. It takes work. It takes effort. Engaging in the resistance against mediocrity is our way of being friends. I'm not here to be average. I don't want to be average in any area of my life. And, and I believe most of us down deep don't. My belief is that most all of us want to have an exceptional life. We actually want to be exceptional. One, sometimes we don't know how to do the things. And then secondly, often we just simply don't have the inner fire to do the work. 
to, to overcome the challenge, to resist the, the urge to be mediocrity. So engaging in a resistance against mediocrity, it's a way of being. That's the fourth. The fifth, I love this one, within every human resides the capability to continually evolve. It doesn't matter where you're at in life. You can be at the top. You can be at the bottom. You know, one thing I have consistently seen over the years, I've sat down with world-renowned artists in the music world, Fortune 500 CEOs and executives. And then I've also sat down with someone who was the bottom of the totem pole for those executives. Someone who just got out of prison uh, recently, someone who has achieved and failed. And you know what, (laughs) you know what I have found is that every single one of those people that I just named are basically all going through the same thing. They're all experiencing the same struggle. You know, we look at it, oh, that it's different because they're in a different position or a different um, economic state or a different demographic or whatever it is. But the reality is, is most of humanity is all experiencing the same challenges. They're just in a different, in a different place. You know, I had a, an awakening some time ago. I was, I was on a run with a friend of mine who, who was an exceptional runner. He was a world-class athlete and he ran at a much faster pace than I did. And his pace was just exceptionally fast. And he was a great runner. And and him and I went out for a run one day and, and at the end of the run, um, he'd gotten out ahead of me, of course, and we finished, he was waiting on me when I got, got there and I'm huffing and puffing. I was proud of myself for the run that I had, I had done. And, and at the end as we're cooling off and stretching. I, I made the comment. I said, man, it's crazy how I wish I was more like you. I'm running and I'm fighting all these demons in my head as I'm running. I'm fighting these, these urges to quit. My knees hurt. I'm, I'm struggling to breathe. And I'm like, man, I wish I was like you and I wasn't experiencing all that. And he looked at me and I'll never forget this. He turned and he said, David, I'm experiencing the exact same thoughts. I'm just running at a faster pace. That's it. That is it. I'm just running at a faster pace because I've done it longer and I've done it more consistently, but I'm I'm having the same urges, the same thoughts you are. And man, that hit me. The reality is, is the person who is achieving the big success and the person that is just trying to get there. They're both on the same journey. They're just at different places at different speeds in the journey, but every human has the capability to continually evolve. Recently, I ran into someone I hadn't seen in 15, 20 years. And a few minutes into the conversation, they said, man, David, you have really changed. And I thought to myself, and you haven't, (laughs) why not? You know, we we we're here to grow. I mean, we're born as a baby. We're pooping our pants. We're peeing in our diaper and we grow out of that. We, we start crawling then we start walking and then we start talking. And next thing you know, we start, you know, experiencing all these things and we go through school, we become young kids and then we become teenagers. And then next thing you know, we become adults. Why do we stop growing? Why do we stop evolving? Why do some adults accept where I am is where I'm, this is just where I'm meant to be. No, within every human resides the capability to continually evolve, to continually get better. That's the fifth principle that I'll share. The last one, betterment, it's a shared journey. It's not a solitary pursuit. Man, I don't know about you, but sometimes when (laughs) I'm given everything I have to be a great husband, I'm given everything I have to be a good dad, given everything I have to be a good teammate with my, with my colleagues. And sometimes you just feel like you're on an Island. I can't, I can't imagine that I'm the only one that feels that way. (laughs) And what I've discovered is when I sit down and I actually share that with a friend, a colleague that I admire, and I look at this guy and think, man, he's killing it. And when I sit down and I I start sharing some of these things that I'm working on and these challenges that I'm feeling every single time I get this change of, of body posture, change of facial expressions. And they're like, man, I I feel that. Yes. I, I I'm there with you. Betterment. 
it's a shared journey. We're not meant to do this alone. Everything I've ever achieved, everything I've ever experienced in which I grew, every single time, someone was a part of that with me. I didn't do it on my own. I, I did not do that on my own. We need each other. We need each other. Recently, I've had situations, I, I've been dealing with a situation that I just felt completely wronged. I knew for a fact that I was in the right, that this situation, these individuals were, whether knowingly or unknowingly, just just really kind of screwing me over. And I felt it. And I was angry. I was disappointed, upset, all the things. And two things I will share. One is I reached out to a friend to, to share with him and to get encouragement for him to put his arm around me and pat me on the back and say, man, David, you're so right. They are so wrong. You deserve better. You, you deserve people who see you better and you, you deserve all these things. And yes, I, man, I can relate to you and, you know, share with me my frustration because misery loves comfort, right? Well, I, I, sh I have this conversation with him and at the end of the conversation, he's like, Hey, can I just talk straight with you for a minute? And he challenges me and tells me, I think you're seeing it wrong. I think you might be seeing this wrong. And he challenged the way I was looking at it from my own angle and challenged me to see things from other people's perspective and perception. And he, it, it didn't feel good. As a matter of fact, I, I was on the phone with him. I, I think I flipped him off because he couldn't see me. But at the end of the day, I hung up and I told him, I don't even know what to say. I, I need to process this. But he directly challenged my beliefs, how I was seeing it. And I needed that. I needed someone to speak truth to me, to challenge me. At the same time, I had a, a, another close friend who heard me, uh, encouraged me to keep you know, pressing, keep doing the right things. And at the end, that situation completely worked out and, and all. But I needed both of those people. I needed both of those people, one to encourage me, to inspire me, to just keep giving me that encouragement, that support that I needed because I'm facing this challenge and I feel like I'm on an island. And then I also needed the other friend who, you know what? He, he admired me, respected me, didn't say anything mean or hateful or put me down in any way, but challenged me, directly challenged me to take a look at how I was seeing the situation. And we need each other. The power of being on this journey with others and sharing this journey, whether it's fitness, whether it's finances, whether it's your relationship, every single one of them, we need each other. And addicted to betterment, we are a community of people with, the, with those six core beliefs. And if those beliefs resonate with you, then guess what? You are addicted to betterment with us. And that's our hope. That is our hope moving forward that we provide content, tools, people, stories that inspire, challenge, equip, uh, give all of us inspiration, encouragement, tools to get better in every area of life. Man, friends, I get fired up about this conversation. I mean, I get fired up about it. It's who I am. It's how we live. And I'm grateful to be on this journey with you. And, and my challenge to you is, is be all in. Be all in. Resist the urge to be mediocre. Resist it. Thank you guys for being on this uh, journey with us. Can't wait to the next episode of Addicted to Betterment. Stay tuned. Exciting things are happening and have a great day, friends. Let's do this. So you just listened to this episode. Now join us in being addicted to betterment. Please subscribe to the show, share with your friends, tag us, and please take a moment, leave a review. Yeah, we do want your stars, but we also, we really want the feedback.